Brown. There's the Postmates. <laughs> Hold please, we have burritos coming. Hey GQ, it's Erin Andrews and I'm going undercover on the internet. This is actually me. All right, let's check Twitter. Peyton Schmidt, quarantine Q&A. Any advice for a teenager who dreams to be a sideline reporter? Don't do it. No, I'm kidding. That's what my dad said to me when I asked him about being a sports broadcaster. I would say, start studying now. When I first started out of school, all I knew was about the Florida Gators. And my dad said to me, there's a lot more than just one team, your favorite team. Start learning about all teams and all sports. Read as much as you can. Look at magazines, newspapers, watch, you know, docu-series. There's a ton of stuff. There's a ton of information right now, especially with social media. So get as educated as possible posted. Andrew Lynch asks a very popular question. Which NFL fan base is the most passionate? Well, I don't want to get in trouble because I feel like all of them are super passionate. But when you're dealing with the Green Bay Packers, they're super passionate. Of course, you've got the faithful with the 49ers, Dallas Cowboys. I mean, they're everywhere. They're like the New York Yankees of the NFL. So they're super passionate as well. The Chiefs, of course, just coming off that Super Bowl run. Most teams are super passionate, but those are big time. Next, Ben Cruz. Who's the funniest football player you've interviewed? There's a ton of them. I, I love guys that show their personality. Ryan Fitzpatrick, his post-game interviews with his hairy chest and the chains when he was with the Bucks a few years ago. Bronx, super hilarious. Mark Ingram's a great guy. Gardner Minshew, he doesn't try to be funny, but he's real, real, real hysterical to be around. Those are probably the ones that have great personalities, great guys to be around. There's the Postmates. <laughs> Case at Tin Man 148 asks, Aaron Andrews, who you got in the NBA? What? <laughs> What's your hubby doing these days? I always have the Celtics because I was born and raised a Boston Celtics fan. Don't think they're doing really well in the Eastern Conference Finals, but hope they pull it out. Obviously, was really hoping for a Clippers Lakers series, but I know that didn't happen. And what's my hubby doing these days? Well, he's still working for the Los Angeles Kings. He's actually working for their development team, getting the young guys ready to go. And uh, when in doubt, he's on a golf course. Submit. Jennifer Irons, this goes for me and Tom Bergeron. I think Hollywood Square should make a comeback with Tom hosting again, and Aaron could be the center square. Duh. I always love that game show and Tom was so funny as a host. Well, Tom's just funny all the time and he doesn't even have to be a host to be funny. That guy wakes up hysterical and yeah, I'm super competitive. Of course I'd be the center square. Don't know if that means I'm good or whatever. How about this? How about I host a game show? I'd love to do that. YHWH Madi, how is Aaron Andrews not on EA Madden NFL? Great question. I did the college game for so long on EA Sports. Get it? EA, EA Sports. I should be doing EA Madden NFL. EA Madden NFL, if you are listening, let's put a sideline reporter in your game. Come on, EA Sports. She's at the game. Duh. All right, let's see what's on Wikipedia. Andrew cited Anna Storm, Melissa Stark, Leslie Visser, and Susie Colfer as female sportscasters she looked up to who ultimately inspired her to become a sportscaster herself. Yes, I was finally able to meet Melissa Stark probably 10 years ago, and I told her she was my Michael Jordan of sideline reporting, and I think she thought I was Crazy. I was also profusely sweating at the time because I was so excited to see her. I also copied her haircut. She had a short blonde situation. I did that too. After defeating cancer and informing the public of her experience, she partnered with a women's health diagnostic company, Hologic, to launch a campaign. The campaign called We Can Change This Stat encourages women to go to the doctor for their annual exams, as well as getting men to encourage the women in their lives to take their exams. Yeah, that meant a lot to me. I kind of felt like it was kind of my duty to let men and women know you need to tell the women in your life to go get checked. It's such an important thing. And as I found out, not a lot of people did. So I was glad I was able to be vocal about that. Okay, Quora. What is Erin Andrews famous for? It's a great question. Sideline reporting. I feel like a lot of people know me from my Richard Sherman interview, which was awesome, by the way.
Submit. Does Erin Andrews have the best job in the US for a female reporter? Well, I love what I do. It's perfect for me. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else on a Thursday night and a Sunday afternoon. So, and I also love working with Joe Buck and Troy Aikman. So, um, I would say so. Replied. This one confuses me. Who would win a fight, Aaron Rodgers or Aaron Andrews? Well, a physical fight, I have no idea because I don't fight. I actually don't even know how. And a verbal fight, he's pretty smart. So I feel like he would just say something super smart and everyone would be like, eh. So I don't know, but you shouldn't fight physically. That's just mean. Moving on, YouTube. This is when I did Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen. Aaron's pink blazer brought me here, LOL. I guess people talk a lot about my blazers. I felt like that one was a good one to wear, that hot pink one, because who doesn't love hot pink? And I was trying to like get up early in the morning and be funny on Andy. But yeah, I love a blazer. I really kind of am terrible at dressing myself, so I feel like blazers are the best accessory. And the other reason why, was no lie, I was just watching an Instagram story from Cindy Crawford, Obsession, and she was saying her favorite thing to wear, white t-shirt, blazer, jeans, and heels, and she can get away with it anywhere, dressy or non-dressy. So the other day we went to dinner and I thought I'd make an effort for my husband because I haven't been home, I've been working football. He was like, why are you so dressed up? And I was like, Cindy Crawford. I didn't wear the heels though, I just, my feet hurt. Love by you. I'm going to miss Erin. She was so good in the interview room. Her pep talks, her friendly jabs, her emotions, she will be missed. This was about my Dancing with the Stars departure and I was calling it a surprise. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I had a great time doing that show. It was a wonderful moment in my life. I loved being around those dancers. They were so much fun. I also loved like how in shape the women were and I was always like, okay, this is my inspiration. Why am I gonna eat three hot dogs at a football game? But thank you very much. It, it was a fabulous time in my life. On the Stephen Colbert Show, Aaron's dad, Steve Andrews, is a reporter on my local news station, so I've always had a soft spot for her. She just seems so sweet and genuine, even when trying to be funny. Also hearing her talk about her dad made me smile. Well, thank you. Talking about my dad makes me emotional because I miss him so much right now. That has just been one of the biggest bummers about this global pandemic is just not being able to see your family. Mine's all the way across the country in Florida. And yeah, he is one of my heroes. He's one of my mentors. He's my best friend. I think that's what is so special about our bond, especially during sports and football, is that my dad is always texting me and I'm always telling him stories about what I heard from the coaches and the players. And it's just such a huge bond and connection that we have. He actually is getting ready to retire in the next two weeks from his job. And it's so crazy because he's been such a fixture in Tampa and I'm so proud of him. And I'm just ready for this COVID to go away so my dad can enjoy his life and his retirement. So thank you for saying those nice things. Let's see what Instagram wants to know. This Instagram is a picture of my love, my golden retriever, Howard David Ortiz Stoll. Uh, Daniela Maria Fernandez asks, what kind of golden is Howie? He is just the cutest. Well, what kind of golden is he? He's a golden retriever. Yeah, he's a purebred golden retriever. Right there, that picture right there with his tail on the bed, we call that his magical tail. So maybe he's a magical tail golden retriever? I don't know, apparently this is what you do when you have a golden, you have weird voices and you name parts of his body. If a baby wanted his dinner. Oh! Ooh. At Sir Bulldog, at Aaron Andrews, was that clap the sound of your mouth slamming shut or his head hitting your jaw? At Sir Bulldog, that was both. And one of my favorite things about this video is just the glare I give my husband as I walk away like, Shh, this is bad. <laughs> I think it was leaving for Miami the next day to go to the Super Bowl. This picture is of my dad holding me. Deja Vu Photog says, your dad was one of the kindest people I met during my time at WFLA. Such a great person and journalist. My dad is one of the kindest people. I love him so much and I can never talk about him without crying. He is such a wonderful person. All right, GQ, that's it. I'm signing off. Thanks for having me.